Hello everyone and welcome to this episode, the Challenges One of the Women Talking About Learning podcast. I'm Andrew Jacobs. The idea of recording a topic on challenges for the podcast was intriguing. We sometimes get an idea of what our guests might discuss, but we didn't know before this one. Luckily, we have two tremendous guests this time to walk us through the topic. Our first guest is Cathy Hoy. Cathy is a seasoned learning leader with over two decades of experience in learning and organisational development. She now runs CLO 100, the home of the Learning Leaders Programme, which is a programme dedicated to the development of L&D leaders, equipping them with the tools and knowledge they need to create high-performing learning organisations. Our next guest is Hatice Demichan. Hatice is a learning and development professional who has cultivated expertise in a range of HR areas. In 2021, she founded her own HR consultancy and coaching business, specialising in individual coaching sessions, soft skills training and consultancy on learning and development programme design and implementation. We were completely absorbed in this conversation. We hope you will be too. Recorded in March of this year, this is Women Talking About Learning. This is Cathy and Hatice talking about challenges. Hey Hattie J, nice to be talking to you today. Um, I believe we are talking about challenges today, uh, which is an interesting topic. Um, what are your kind of initial thoughts in this space? Yeah, uh, hi Katie, it has been a very speed intro. <laughs> How are you today? Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you because I know you very little yeah good actually really good um good day it's been a good week actually and um i have to admit i'm I'm quite looking forward to the weekend nothing nothing planned which is actually my perfect weekend <laughs> what about you <laughs> i'm very well thank you and i am super excited to be in this podcast with you uh, the subject as you said is very uh, attractive challenge uh actually it's a really uh, massive uh, topic to talk about but uh, what I would like to talk with you uh, to underline about the women challenges in the workplace, work environment, and something like that related with something like that. And what's your perspective about? Interesting. I mean, I, I and I, 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 yeah, looking forward to hearing your your views on that. Um, I suppose for me personally, I, I may come at it from a, a slightly different angle. Um, I think you know, whilst whilst I see many challenges in the organisation, you know, particularly for for women um, in different positions, I probably see less in in kind of learning in that in that learning environment. So I'll be really interested to hear hear your perspective on that. Um, I guess for me, from a challenges perspective, it's probably more challenges for learning and development generally, and and actually, you know how we can maybe help to sort of overcome some of those. I think particularly at that very senior, you know, learning leader level, really. Um, I think there's, I mean, but but as you said, I mean, challenges could could cover so many things, couldn't it? (laughs) It's a a nice broad remit for us. (laughs) So both of us are L&D people, so it will be an easier uh, approach for us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, one of the things, you know, for me, I, 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 I feel that there's still um and I and I think the industry has been talking about this for quite a while but I do feel that there is still a challenge uh, in learning and development to really be seen as a credible value add function in the organization so for me probably most things center around that I, I think that we need to be able to overcome that as an industry as a function as a, as a learning leader and I think you know potentially for me one one of the things is you know actually the something that contributes to that challenge is the fact that we don't really have um, a, a presence at the executive level. Um, you know, I mean, people keep talking about, you know, I don't have a seat at the table. I suppose it's the same kind of thing. You know, I don't have a, a voice of influence at an executive level within my organization. Um, and I think, you know, that's that's probably a, a massive part of that big, that challenge of, of trying to be seen as a, a credible value add function. I, I don't know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, um, I think you are right about that because it's a strategic uh, issue, but it's not represented in the top level. Uh, it's, it is, of course, it's the HR topic. I am uh, part. I am accepting that, but it's really important. Uh, it is always understood that learning and development equals to training. 
uh, there is an approach like that, there is an imagination like that, pursue like that. So uh, when it is something like that, it is underestimated. And uh, it's something that if somebody should be promoted, if somebody will be go from somewhere to somewhere, uh, he needs some training. Let's do uh, give some training and he will be better. He will uh, get better in their co- competencies. But it's not like that. Learning and development, it's not something so easy, so weak, so uh, small. Uh, I think you are right about that. It should be understood and uh, represented in a more higher yeah, level. I, I, yeah, and you're, you're dead right there um, as well. I think I think people do look at that and think that, you know, learning and development equals, you know, training or, you know, worse yet, a course. Um, and, and we, you know, then the expectation from the business is, oh, great, well, that's that problem solved. Uh, they'll, they'll now be able to do X, Y and Z, you know, if only, <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> that would be great. Um I do. I mean, I don't know if you ever worked in in organisations or seen, um, I suppose, an organisation where L and D is really represented at that at that senior level. Have you seen it done well? Uh, maybe some global uh, companies like Unilever or PNG. It's maybe better represented because they are global and they shoot some heads on the uh, some functions. So uh, they have some director level uh, people on these positions. So it is more strategical approach, and uh, I think these global companies should be example for SMEs or some other uh, companies. Yeah. But it's not common, of course. How how you observe it in the industry? What's your uh, thought about that? Because I've had certainly from a personal experience, I've 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 had a number of sort of head of L and D roles in different organisations, always kind of corporate. That's that's my my background really is is kind of corporate space. Um, but I probably only actually had one, I have to admit, where I needed to report to the board level. Um, so I, th- I do find it's it's quite um, it's quite rare, actually. Um, so but but I have to admit, it was also it was interesting for me because I remember the first time having to do that and thinking, oh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm prepared for this. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm prepared to go in to a, to a boardroom <laughs> and actually talk about learning and development because actually it's not what you need to be talking about in the boardroom. You know, whilst learning and development is your area, it's your remit, you need to be talking about the output and, and that value that it's going to be adding to the organisation. And, and it was a, such a, a flip in my mind, I suppose, to, to a, like a switch really, um, to kind of go, actually, don't, don't talk about learning and development in this room because all these other directors that are sat around this table aren't really interested in that. They want to know actually what I'm doing to help improve the business, to help make the business more money, to help their function more profitable or to help the performance improve. And, and that's what I think that the conversation needs needs to be about. And I, and I think that that is one of the challenges. So, so one of one of them is actually getting that voice at that level. But then on the other hand, it's when you've got that voice. Make sure you use it well. <laughs> don't don't be talking about, you know, actually learning and development at all, really be talking about how how you're going to be improving the business or improving satisfaction or you know performance uh, whatever it is i think i think kind of that that focus on the outcome is is what i've seen seems to resonate more yeah you are absolutely right um return of investment i think uh, if not presented in the board level and well presented it's not possible because People are coming to a company and they are leaving the company. So uh, the, the the investment, the whole the investment you done for them is going to rest when they le- left the company. You have to make a new hire and all the process are starting from the zero point. So you, all the things are about the, making a good performance for the company, for uh, real sector, I am talking about that. But if the people are leaving the company uh, instantly, so it's not the, a good thing for this company. Um, what, what's difficult here, I think the, um, it's not so easy to uh, evaluate the return of investment. Uh, for 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 example, you are making some investment for a training or development program, uh, but there is not an impact uh, all about the results of the company. For example, sales company or turnover comp- turnover of the company, there is not an impact result, so it's not so easy to show about that. There are some companies nowadays. It's a good thing they they are using some analytics to show that return of investment. Maybe. 
if the company has enough power uh, spending money on that kind of things, it's good to use them and understand the relation between that uh, better. But uh, most of the companies are not uh, doing such kind of things, so they have still some way it is, about it. it uh, yes, and, I, and I, I do agree with you, and I actually agree that, that we make return on investment very hard as well. Um, and uh, but, but I have to say, I, I'm, I think we get a little bit preoccupied with return on investment. I think that um, L&D seems to think it's something that we have to demonstrate, and then we all kind of kick ourselves for not being able to do it right. Um, and we can't kind of demonstrate it and we struggle. Whereas actually, I think that from a business perspective, as in like from the rest of the business, I don't mean to talk about L&D outside of the business. We're obviously a, a core part of it, but but you know what I mean when I, when I say that. Um, I think that the business are looking to see that L&D have delivered some level of value to the organization. I don't necessarily think they would be expecting to see an exact return on in for the investment that we've made in whatever the, the the development initiative is i think we like to think that's needed or, or we think it's needed but actually you know now now on the other side now running a business i have to admit i would look at well okay what's the value that we've got from this oh well i can do my job better i can do my job quicker i can save an hour in my day now because i'm using this brilliant new ai tool we've invested in great i'm not busy there going right okay well how much did we spend on the ai tool what does that equate to for you learning how to use it and now you're saving an hour i just know if someone's saying to me they're saving one or two hours a day because we've just bought a tool i'm thinking brilliant this is great and this is probably only going to get better so i i do wonder if we we make it harder for ourselves you, you know and actually i, I always come back to the kind of um, return on expectations, actually. For, for me, that's probably higher. So if I've had a conversation with a stakeholder and they've said, actually, this is what I'm expecting from this initiative, and we work it out together and we decide, importantly, not just what's in scope, but equally what's out of scope. So we're really setting expectations. If I can then deliver on that at the end, I've met their expectation and we're, you know, we're happy, we're, we're joined up. We we know that actually L&D are doing good things. We're helping the business move faster. So I don't know. I, I, I feel sometimes return on investment is we make too much of it, actually. What do you think, I mean, from your, your perspective, because you listed at the beginning there about, um, you know, some some challenges specifically faced by, by women within kind of in, in learning and in organisations. Do you see, you know, where I'm talking about maybe having a, a challenge of learning aligning and getting a voice at the exec level do you find that that's maybe harder for women to do that or what, what are you what are you seeing uh, actually from my perspective um let's start from the beginning when uh, we first decided um that this that the subject of this podcast uh, would be challenge uh first of all i looked at the dictionary what's the meaning of the word of challenge so the dictionary says that uh, challenge is a situation that requires great effort and determination to be done successfully. Great effort and determination. I would like to underline that. So after reading this definition, I, uh, I thought about what, what this means uh, for the woman or to me as a woman. And uh, I actually thought that... Um, uh, how to say the impact the impact of being a woman both for the learning uh, processes and for the whole the dynamics in life are the same are all related uh, with the which geography you are born or which family you you are uh, or the culture you are born into so uh, it's affecting all your education if you are married early if you have the violence uh, you face it some uh, tough things when you are growing up. It's all related with all this culture. Why, why I am telling all these things? Because I think um, this is important because when we look at the number of the women who are in the uh, business, in the real sector and industry, it's really less from the men. Uh, according to the numbers, it says that just 47% of women are in the uh, workplace, but if you look at the men, it's 72. There's a difference nearly 25, or not nearly exactly 25%. It's it's really huge. And uh, also in some regions in the world, it's nearly about about 50%, more than 25. 
uh, actually. So from my opinion, this challenge uh, for a woman in learning starts from uh, this point first. That's interesting. Um, I really wonder what you are thinking. That's about really that. interesting. I am, um, and I, you know, and I'm aware. I'm aware, obviously, that you know we're 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 nowhere near yet, unfortunately, any kind of gender parity, um, and that's going to take. Well, sadly, I think that the the most recent stats were still about a hundred years away from that, um, which is a bit of a depressing statistic. Um, but uh, I suppose I. <laughs> I've seen, and I don't know, it might be because of my sort of circumstances. I've seen, um, I suppose I don't, I haven't seen much firsthand of that in the workplace, but I have seen it kind of almost through third party. So through um, colleagues, um, peers, I think that have maybe been in different situations than me, have maybe left to have children, um, have had to make very difficult decisions in terms of, you know, I suppose career and family life balance. Um, and I think that that, that probably plays, a, a, it has a lot to do with it. Um, but I mean, there are there are many things. I, I, how, do, how do you see that kind of general view then and those general statistics linking to the kind of learning and development world? Uh, let's, let's leave behind the um, numbers, but I would like to talk about my experiences about that. Maybe it would be more useful because there are some uh, nature about the women's itself. For example, getting uh, pregnant, uh, having a child, giving birth, the menstrual period that we live uh, every month, uh, or the menopause thing that Andrew talked uh, about that before. Um, for example, we are we as a woman. Most of the women actually are having uh, a painful menstrual period every uh, month. So if they have a training that or that is organized uh, for by the company, it means that. Uh, she will not be participating to this training because maybe he will not even go to the work. Uh, many of my friends are uh, doing this situation. I am not experiencing any painful thing, but I can observe it easily that most of the women friends of mine are doing the, living the same thing. Or um, if you are a pregnant lady, it's a, a celebrating thing, but it means that you are cut in the uh, training and development list and it will be delayed to the time that you will return to the company. So in this period, you are just left to yourself and um, it, is, it is like you are not in the company at all. Maybe you have, you have uh, missing some promotion opportunities, some career opportunities. Uh, I am also a coach, a professional coach, and I remember that uh, one of my clients uh, postponed her plans to have a baby in order not to miss a micro MBA um, opportunity provided by her company. So uh, it is the problem of women. It's not a problem of a man. Um, so I think I, I may have more more observation about that. And have you? Because um, I, I always wonder as well if there's um, if people experience uh, a, a lack of role model. I suppose, for want of a better word. And I know that, um, you know, and, and given the, the kind of current statistics, we see less women in senior leadership positions. Um, I feel quite fortunate that actually I've worked for many, many uh, senior women. Um, and, you know, either they've been the HRD or the CPO, but actually, in fact, then the CEO uh, or, or the level between them has also been a, a woman. And, and so I, I suppose I've seen a lot of that as well. Um, and I think that 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 plays a massive part in organisations. The more you kind of see people in in those roles in any area, not just learning and development, um, I think it it creates well. A you, you first you've got a more diverse senior leadership team, which which we know uh, is an advantage for an organisation. But also you are showing that it's it's possible to do, and that clearly there's something about this organisation that will either support it or enable it. Um, I suppose I, I, I see I, I absolutely the, the challenges you've mentioned can, can totally resonate. Uh, those totally resonate with me um, and certainly, you know, colleagues that, that I've worked with. Um, I suppose I, I, I don't have you got thoughts on because, you know, it's discussing challenges, I, I guess, is, is, is one thing. We've got lots of challenges, but but actually it's kind of how do we start to 
to make a change from those challenges so that they become less challenging. Um, what are the things that, do you have any thoughts on on kind of how, how organisations could better support women in, in these positions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a great uh, question. Um, actually, we are talking all the challenges, but what are the advices? Of course, uh, there should be some way to overcome uh, them. It's not easy, but there are still some ways, I think. For First of all, um, self, self-awareness. Uh, as women, we should be aware that we have rights. We have equal rights with, women, with, with men. And uh, companies should make these policies in their uh, routine, daily routine activities. We should be able to ask about that. Uh, so the self-awareness about it uh, is the first and most important thing. And it is a, a very common uh, thing nowadays. It is DEI, diversity, equality, and inclusion. It's I think it's a part of it totally. So uh, if the government itself make the policies like that uh, about about the equality or the positive maybe discrimination against women uh, would be very a good idea. Of may, maybe for example, small companies or uh, SMEs, it would be a good uh, way to uh, make policies like that because if they be free, if they are uh, free, maybe they will not do anything about that. But if it's the government policy, they should be doing something uh, about it. So the second thing is the organization itself to make some policies and government policies also. Uh, if I uh, was in the charge of a company, I would, would I would like to put some mentoring and coaching programs for women to understand that themselves better. Because as women, we are mostly uh, we are mostly taught that we are very fragile, we are very emotional. And in a, in a one-to-one feedback, most of the manager says, please don't be, uh, please don't be so soft like a woman. Please be hard. Please be like, like, like a man. Um, they don't want women to be itself. But uh, it's, it's not, uh, I don't think the right thing in a work environment, uh, it's the bias, I think, against the women. Um, so uh, with mentoring and coaching, I would like to women understand that they don't need to be hard as uh, like a man uh, it's it's okay to show the uh, emotions it's okay uh, maybe uh, not to not to shout to, a, to to someone else in the company or some some colleagues it's okay it's it's not to be done in the, in those ways uh, and uh, some coaching and mentoring programs should make uh, also women make feel relief about that it's I, I it's funny actually because I see and I, I I do appreciate that 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 view exists. Um, I have to admit that's not my experience. My experience is almost exactly the opposite. It's working in organisations that recognise yeah, and and right. I say I think with my my kind of peer group as well I, in the main, I would say that the organisations that I've worked for worked in understand the importance of. Um, I hate the word softer skills, um, but kind of relational skills. And actually that typically speaking, um, women tend to be more naturally stronger emotional intelligence. Uh, and actually they put more effort in an organization into trying to help men to be more open about their feelings and their emotions uh, rather than telling women to, to be less so. Um, so I, I think I've got quite a different a different view, view there actually and a different experience. Um, but I know that um, there are some great people in our industry actually doing some really good things to help women uh, kind of have a have a voice. Because I think one of the one of the really important things is actually women championing women. Um, like I totally agree with you that that actually organisations need to be doing lots. But I think as women, we need to champion and support other women where we can. Um, and I know Helen Marshall um, at Thrive. She runs the Women in Group. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a kind of online group and a, and a WhatsApp forum. Uh, it's a whole community now, actually. It's it's really grown. But it's actually for any women in learning and development, no matter if you're you know internal or you're an external, a partner, what, whatever. Um, and there's some brilliant conversations in there. But but I think the the bigger part of it is that actually she's creating an environment where women are supporting and bolstering other women, which you know which is really nice and and I think quite effective as well. 
Um, first of all, uh, I think you are so lucky not to experience any kind of things. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. Uh, um, I am agree about that, uh, all the good things that Helen Marshall is doing. Uh, but still, I can say that from the environment, maybe I come from Turkey. It's a, a country that, that is uh, very different from the most European countries mm. about the cultural side, I can say. Uh, and uh, uh, I also had the chance of working at DHL, and DHL had many com- many in many countries. There are most of uh, branches in many countries, and I used to have many mentorship, uh, how to say, mentorship and coaching actually conversations with many colleagues from these countries, and uh, I can say easily say that uh, it's not. It's not uh, maybe for European countries. I can put it as a, as as a part, but most of the countries are using this kind of problems about not uh, being equality between men and women, and facing this kind of problems so much. Uh, but still, I'm including United States and European countries to the uh, same basket. Uh, I can say that, for example, uh, glass sailing. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are European or uh, some other uh, Middle East countries uh, colleague. It doesn't really matter. If you are a woman, you are have you are having the less chance, according to a man. Unfortunately, it's a you know it's a very common metaphor, and uh, all most of the companies are unfortunately using the same situation. So the companies are putting some goals for the women to get the board level uh, and they are pushing they are uh, making it it's making it an obligation uh, and if they can achieve that they are uh, applauding they themselves about that so i can say that um, there is still way to go that but uh, women are making their voices more like helen and, and like you, like me, so it will be a good example. It, it, that we, we will be good role models, I think, and uh, it will get better, I'm I hope. I'm sure it will. It, it has to, right? <laughs> it has to. I mean, it has to. I think, has to. Um, I mean, part, you know, part, part of it for me, I mean, listening to you talk and, and the examples you've given, I wonder if part of it is almost a bit of... Um, uh, I don't know how else to describe it other than kind of blindness uh, on my side because... I don't know, and, I, and I'm wondering if this relates to um, mindset in in some way as well. I'm not. I'm not, by the way, saying that that all these challenges don't exist. They absolutely exist, and we can see it. It's black and white um, in organisations. But I I do wonder as well if a lot of women are kind of going into situations because of um, everything that's that's happened in the past and thinking and actually questioning, am I equal? Whereas I, I think if you go in with the mindset, well, I am equal. Um, you tend to challenge more yourself and you tend to put yourself in situations and not think about should I, shouldn't I? And I think, you know, when when I I try and think back to when I was a lot younger, my mum was very, um, so I grew up just just with my mum and she was absolutely adamant that I would grow up uh, believing that men and women were, were equal and there was no sexism in the world. Now, it was obviously, a, she she did really well at that, but it was a bit of a shock to me when I joined like the real world as an adult and got my first job and realised, well, hang on a minute, not everything is equal, mum. Um, <laughs> but I, th- I think that that kind of mindset was, was amazingly helpful. And it was just kind of like, well, of course I can do it. There was never any kind of, you know, hesitation. There was never kind of, well, can I do it as a woman? It's never, it's never been a thought, I guess, in my head. Um, but I, I've learned over the years through colleagues and peers and also seeing that the situation and the unfair treatment uh, of, of an unequal treatment um, of, of women in organisations. So I, I, obviously I know it exists, but I, I wonder if there's something more we can all do around, you know, mindset and, and doing that with with young girls, you know, or girls at a very young age um, to kind of not not be questioning uh, should I be equal, but but almost just just, you know, assuming you are uh, and, and go from there and I wonder if change might happen a little quicker I, I don't know yeah, yeah that's that's a great and really practical advice <laughs> I think I have also a mother of two two I have two daughters and I, this is the only dream of mine that uh, they they uh, believe that and they 
they are growing up in that my mindset they, are, they, they will not need the questioning like you said uh, am, am i equal they sh- they they should always, always absolutely say, well, and they are and they are and and then you you see i think in the, you, you just reframe where the where the issue is so rather than as a woman thinking that the issue is with you and you're not fitting in and you're not doing something right if you go in with the mindset i am equal then if if the things around you don't adhere to that then you know that the problem is the environment it's not you Whereas I think if you go in thinking, am I equal? You'll always think the problem's with you rather than the environment. So I, I do think it's a bit of a, a bit of a mind shift. Um, but uh, I'm, I, I'm imagining with, with your views and your opinions and your background, uh, y- you will be raising your two daughters beautifully and they will be a force to be reckoned with, <laughs> Etta Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope, I hope. I- that's my no, dream, I'm sure they will. and it's great actually now I don't know if you notice I mean obviously you're you know you're you're a mum I'm I'm not but I I notice I've got a lot of nephews and nieces and um, a stepdaughter and I notice lots these days of, of like books as well really kind of highlighting um female uh heroes heroines I suppose and and also you know brilliant women in history and highlighting what they've done because you realize you know that actually when you go through school and even as a kid the stories you you read when you were growing up it's usually about men doing things <laughs> and and you read in history don't you certain <laughs> you know doctors and scientists and it's all about the men and and actually I'm loving now that they're, they're creating stories for for little girls well girls and boys to, to understand actually there were loads of brilliant women in history that did all these amazing things but it wasn't women that were writing the history books it was men and so women have kind of been I guess kind of hidden in a, in a lot of ways um so I, I don't know about you but I'm, I'm seeing lots of of different kind of books and resources certainly to, to raise awareness from from a young age yeah yeah, you are right. It's it's getting better actually. It's getting really better. Uh, as I remember, uh, for a very long time, maybe uh, last twenty years, something like that, some fifteen or twenty years, uh, in banking uh, companies, advertisements only men uh, could voice the advertisement because men voice is more confident and more <laughs> trustable. Uh, yeah, in the in the modern days, it started. They started to use the women in their advertisements. But fortunately, it's really changing. Like you said, there are more writers, more astronauts, more advertisers, more HR everywhere. More women here. Uh, we are we are voicing our voice. Uh, we are getting our voice to be heard by That's everyone. Brilliant. And yeah, everywhere. it's brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's definitely we're definitely we're definitely seeing seeing a change, and it's it's you know it's for the positive, um, which is great. And and I think it's probably on all of us to you know, men and women to just think, well, how do we, how do we make this happen quicker? What, what can we do? Cause you, it's, it's easy, isn't it? To think about, oh, I, you know, I feel really bad about that or, or I'm really angry about that or, but actually to change your, the way you think to what am I going to do to change that? And I have to remind myself of that a lot because there are things I get very frustrated about very quickly, but I, I have to now tell myself, you know, actually there's something I can probably do here and something I can do differently and, and someone I can support better um, and I think maybe if, if, yeah, if more of us did that, um, maybe we'll, we'll get to gender parity sooner than a hundred years is, uh, <laughs> is hoping. Yes, 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 sure. So why not? And sisterhood is really important uh, related with it. It's, it's really important to get the support uh, from other women and, uh, from the uh, people that experience the same pains or same challenges with you. Uh, listen them, listen to them, and get their advice. Get their support is really uh, helpful about uh, overcome these challenges. No, that's great. That's great. Oh, I've really enjoyed talking with you, Hatajay. <laughs> it's really good conversation. I think we should meet yeah. up and do this over coffee somewhere. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Of course, I would love to. It, I, I really appreciate. I learned a lot from you from this uh, session also. I'm really uh, happy that we met. Uh, no, me you. too. Thank you, thank you so much. For your time. <laughs> when it was suggested that we record a challenges episode, we didn't think it would live up to its name. This took some real effort to arrange, particularly in the background, but we did get there in the end. We love that the conversation started in one direction and then did a complete 180 and followed a different avenue. This is why we get such enjoyment in recording this special podcast. 
A massive thank you to both Cathy and Hatice for their time and an engaging conversation. Their contact details are in the show notes, along with links to our website, future episodes and our donation page. We'll be back soon with a special episode of Women Talking About Learning and it'll be the Learning Technologies 2024 one. As always, thanks for listening and we'll see you again soon.